good news for you today. The good news is that you're all going to live forever. <clears throat> now you say, I've heard that before. No, no, this is something different. This is not the good news of Jesus Christ. It's something entirely different. You're all going to live together when the entire contents of your brain are uploaded into a computer program. It's going to be beautiful. In the year 2006, a futurist, author, computer programmer, genius, Raymond Kurzweil wrote the book, The Singularity is Near. And I have it, and you may borrow it from me after the worship today. And in this book, Raymond Kurzweil, whose credentials are very, very impressive, says that by the year 2045, we will have so integrated human biology and computer technology that the human brain will become compatible to an upload into a digital system and we can live forever. It's an amazing book. A significant part of the book is dedicated to medical advancements within which uh, Kurzweil envisions the human body as a computer and the cellular structure as a series of interconnected computer programs. And he says that when we begin to treat the body as such, there will be great advances in medicine such that by the year 2020, medicine will be a thousand times more effective than it was in the year 2000, and that by 2030, medicine will be a million times more effective than in the year 2000. It's awesome ideas. Not only will you be inside a computer, you will have your consciousness, and the computer itself won't be sitting on someone's desk. It will be enclosed within an actual semi-biological body. So you will be walking around with the contents of your brain and your consciousness and your awareness. It's going to be awesome. Or you might want to have your personality imprinted into a swarm of flying nanobots. And you can go wherever you want. Now I know you're all sitting there thinking, 2045, how old will I be? How long do I have to hope? Well, I'm going to be 87. There's a chance. I, I can do it. I'm going to start looking after myself. <laughs> Raymond Kurzweil is going to be 97. So he's a bit concerned. Um, I don't mean to make fun of him because he truly is impressive. But he is so anxious to be there when it happens that he takes 250 vitamin pills per day. And every day he has an intravenous treatment of every health benefiting substance known to humankind. He really wants to get there. And the question I have for you is this, do you want to be uploaded? Do you want to become a computer program that lives forever? Or until somebody trips over the cord? <laughs> or spills their Starbucks? It may be that Raymond Kurzweil has never read any of the ancient myths of Rome or the Norse cultures or the Greeks within which there are lots of immortals. <coughs> when the immortals lie down to sleep, they only have one dream. They dream of dying because they have grown weary of this world. Do you want to be uploaded? I don't know. 
come a time when those who are devoted will be begging to go home. There may come a time when those who are uploaded will be saying, can we have our consciousness imprinted on a computer circuit and also enter the kingdom of God? Or is it one or the other? Humankind has always been dissatisfied with death and has always been seeking some way to live a little bit longer or to live forever. And there have been many cultures that have said, we offer you a way to live forever. The Roman Empire did it. The Roman Empire said, you can upload your soul into the consciousness of the eternal city of Rome. And if you do that, even after you die, you will still be alive because you will be alive in Rome. You will be a part of something bigger than yourself. And in order to do that, all you had to do was once a year, when representatives of the Roman consul came to your house, you would say to them, I confess that Caesar is God. And they would give you a certificate and the guarantee that you would live forever within the consciousness of Rome. The certificate was also the license that you required to do business in the marketplace in any city or any town in the Roman Empire. To buy food, you would show the certificate. If you wanted water, you would show the certificate. To sell your goods, you would show the certificate that said, I confess, Caesar is God. They did it in every town. They did it even in Jerusalem. It may well be that when John, the writer of the Revelation, spoke of the mark of the beast, he was talking about that certificate. Caesar is God. And it's important to understand that that's what Rome was doing when you read the passage in Matthew 22 today in which the Pharisees try to trick Jesus when they say to him, is it right to pay tribute to Caesar? And they know they have him trapped because if he says yes, then he is a hypocrite. If he says no, they can report him to the Roman consul in Jerusalem and Jesus will be put to death. Jesus doesn't say yes or no. Jesus said to that clever Pharisee, show me the money. The Pharisee went into his pocket and pulled out a coin upon which was engraved a picture of Caesar. Jesus said, render unto Caesar what is Caesar's and unto God what is God's famous words. And they have a lot of meaning. Maybe they have something to do with Christians paying taxes in the civil society. But maybe they have something to do with a slightly deeper and more powerful theological point than that. In fact, Jesus doesn't answer yes or no. Instead, he gives a roundabout answer that brings new realization to that Pharisee, even as he stands there. On the coin was a picture of Caesar, and inscribed on the coin, like we have a God we trust, or things like that. On the Roman silver denarius, it would have said, Caesar is God, son of God. And a practicing Jew would never use that coin. A proper religious Jew would have shunned it. So as soon as that Pharisee holds out the coin, Jesus puts him to shame because he doesn't need to have it. The people within Palestine were allowed to print their own coins which did not bear the image of Caesar. So he is put to shame once for merely possessing it. Then Jesus says, render unto Caesar, and it's important to know that the word render is very special. It doesn't just mean 
Give to Caesar what is Caesar's. Give to God what is God's. The word render from the Greek kathiskun means give back. Give it back to the place from which it came. So give back to Caesar everything that Caesar has given you and give back to God everything that God has given you or everything that belongs to God. And that Pharisee knew very well what belonged to God. Psalm 24, 1, what belongs to God? The earth is the Lord's. And the fullness thereof, the world, and all them that dwell therein. Everything belongs to God. Nothing belongs to Caesar. Give thee but thine own. All that we have is thine. I trust, O oh God, from thee. And so the Pharisee is put to shame a second time because he forgot Psalm 24 1. And Jesus is saying, Render unto Caesar nothing. Finally, when Jesus says, render unto Caesar what is Caesar's and unto God what is God's, he is saying, Caesar and God are not the same. Caesar is not God. Jesus is saying to him, give your soul to God. Because God gave it to you and owns it, and gives Caesar nothing. There's always somebody saying, I offer you life eternal. Raymond Kurzweil, uploading your soul into an Intel motherboard. Caesar, upload your soul into Rome. Modern society, upload your soul into the military, industrial, capitalistic complex, and you will live forever. And Jesus says, upload your soul into God and live. And Jesus is always saying, come to me. All you who labor and are heavy laden, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in spirit. And elsewhere, those words in my Father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going now. But if I go, I shall return again and bring you unto my son. I will upload you into the kingdom of God where you will truly live forever. And how do you upload your soul into the kingdom of God? It's not a matter of investing your soul in the church, but rather of giving your soul over to compassion and tenderness and to love. And when you do that, you are already in the kingdom that is eternal. The kingdom that outlasted the Roman Empire, the kingdom that will still be flourishing and eternal when all the computers have turned to dust, the kingdom of God. In the last three of the hymns that we sing today, they are all about being within Christ. Christ of all my hopes, the ground, Christ the spring of all my joy, still in thee may I be found. My hope is built on nothing less, or may I then in him be found. And in 3 
1776, Lord, the light of your love is shining. In the midst of the darkness shining, by your blood may I enter your righteousness. It's about being in Christ. By compassion, by gentleness, by care, by respecting the dignity of all, by doing your very best to interact in a meaningful and helpful way with the poor around us, you will have uploaded your soul into the kingdom of God. And you will live forever, but only by the grace and the compassion of Christ, our Savior. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.